Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Biba mess tomorrow. I'm Alana Chargaloff of Fison. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Thursday, March 2nd. Later in today's show, we have another episode of Buenas Talk with Polly Suba, who will be joined by Dr. Michael Luhan Bavakwa to share the details on this year's Adult Chamorro Immersion Camp set for this summer. But first, headlining the Marianas variety today, Four U.S. inspectors general have offered to review the CNMI government's expenditure of American Rescue Plan Act and other federal funds. Governor Arnold Palacios said he was approached by them while he was in Washington, D.C., and offered to look into the CNMI's expenditures of ARPA monies and other federal funds received by the previous administration. He noted that the information gathered during the CNMI House hearings on the ARPA-funded boost program was also submitted to federal agencies. Palacios said his administration will also request funding from the U.S. Department of the Interior to conduct forensic audits on ARPA funds, the community disaster loans, and all the federal monies that have been provided to the Commonwealth in the last five to six years. And Senate President Edith DeLeon Guerrero said the executive and legislative branches of government are taking action to address its financial crisis. In her remarks during the Saipan Chamber of Commerce membership meeting, she said they have created a fiscal response team that will soon make recommendations. Dillian Guerrero said there is also an ongoing assessment of federally funded projects to expedite their implementation so that funds can be rolled into the economy. She added that they also plan to introduce sound social and economic legislation. On February 28th, the Criminal Investigation Bureau authorities arrested Mark Benaventi and Josephine Pangalinen for a January 24th burglary and theft incident at a residence in Aslito, Saipan. Through the course of the investigation, detectives from the CIB identified a vehicle of interest on February 8th. The same vehicle was pulled over on a traffic stop and later impounded, processed, and inventoried by authorities. The operator of the vehicle was identified as Benaventi. On February 21st at about 11.30 a.m., the victim arrived at CIB where she positively identified some contents within the same minivan as her personal belongings. Judge Wesley Bogdan signed the arrest warrant with bell set at $10,000 each. And finally, from the Marianas variety, the cruise ship Diamond Princess will visit the port of Saipan on March 4th, arriving at approximately 8 a.m. and departing at 6 p.m. The ship carries 1,546 guests and 1,097 crew on board. For more on these stories and others, pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety or visit mvariety.com. Coming up, your morning headlines for Guam from our friends at the Pacific Daily News, as well as another bonus talk all ahead with Polly Suba. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Half a day, Guan families. Are you interested in getting your Hunter Education Certification? The Department of Agriculture's Hunter Education Program is hosting ongoing in-person classes open to Guam residents ages 13 and older. You'll learn hunter ethics and responsibility, wildlife conservation, basics of firearm and shooting skills, hunting equipment and techniques, survival skills, outdoor field skills, and more. The class meets the International Hunter Education Association national standards and does not expire. Attendees must pre-register in advance by emailing jane.dia at doag.guam.gov. Student manuals must be completed before the class day. Classes are open on a first-come, first-served basis. Students under 18 must be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. And if you can't attend our in-person class, don't worry. You may also register for the online Hunter Education Certification course by emailing jane.dia at doag.guam.gov. Safe hunting begins with Hunter Education.
Welcome back to Buenos. Here are your top stories from the Pacific Daily News. Imaga Hagen Guahan Lulian Guerrero has selected Colonel Michael Cruz as the next Adjutant General of the Guam National Guard. Major General Esther Agagi, who served as Adjutant General since 2019, announced her intent to retire in December 2022. Dr. Michael Cruz, a surgeon with an MBA in health care, is also a former Lieutenant Governor of Guam, former Senator, and a combat veteran of Operation Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. Cruz has taken command of the Guard as of yesterday while awaiting legislative confirmation. In other news, calls for another round of bailouts for local businesses resulted in two lawmakers introducing legislation to extend the Local Employers Assistance Program. Senator Chris Barnett introduced a bill to pump $10 million into the program. A bill from Frank Blosh Jr. would provide $15 million. Both bills were filed within 24 hours of Guam restaurateurs publicly petitioning government officials to help keep restaurants afloat. And panhandling at public intersections no longer would be allowed if legislation introduced by Senator Roy Kanata becomes law. Kanata on Tuesday introduced Bill 58, which mirrors a draft bill distributed by Attorney General Doug Moylan. It would repeal the section of the Guam Code allowing panhandling at intersections. More in legislative news, a public hearing for Bill 6, the Responsible Cannabis User Employment Protection Act, would be held at 9 a.m. at the Guam Congress Building. Senator Will Parkinson introduced the measure, which also would prevent any landlord, college, or government agency from testing for cannabis as a condition of employment, housing, education, or government services. And two students sickened at Lewis P. Antelon Middle School earlier this week used a dab pen containing a controlled substance and were taken to the hospital. The hospital then released them to their parents the same day. A widely circulated social media post incorrectly stated the illness was caused by the consumption of gummies containing fentanyl. Principal Agnes Guerrero investigated the incident and determined that the report was false. Guam DOE confirmed that the students had a prohibited dab pen, a type of vaporizing device, containing a controlled substance which they hid from school staff. And finally, from the Pacific Daily News, Pepsi Guam bottling faces more than $180,000 in federal penalties after U.S. Department of Labor safety inspectors found several safety violations at the facility. OSHA inspectors started inspections last October and found eight violations of machine safety procedures and determined Pepsi Guam also failed to comply with electrical and respiratory safety standards. For more on these stories and others, log on to GuamPDN.com. And coming up, Polly Zooms with Dr. Michael Lujan Bavakwa, who is once again partnering with the Hurao Academy for this summer's Adult Chamorro Immersion Camp. This is Buenas in the Marianas. Welcome to another edition of Buenas Talk right here on PBS Guam. With me now in Zoom is Dr. Michael Bavakwa, Dr. Michael Lujan Bavakwa, and thank you so much once again for spending some time with us here. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, your Chamorro classes uh, that started on weekends, right? And now it's really um, exploded and evolved into what you're doing, a, a immersion camp for adults per se, right? I have saw some of yeah. the footage that you sent me. It looks like uh, some of the classes are over at the Guam Museum. And then you go out into, uh, like, uh, what is it, Sagan Couture tomorrow, and then just out mm -hmm. hiking as well, right? And so when did, this, oh, when did this camp start? Like, it all began, the thought process began during your tomorrow classes on weekends, on Saturdays? Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so yes, um, I have taught, I used to teach the Chamorro language at the University of Guam. I've taught it in the community at coffee shops for more than a decade. And during the pandemic, things kind of shifted. Java Junction that I used to have my class at closed down temporarily. And so I asked my class, would you like to meet via Zoom until it opens up again? And my students were interested, and I said, you know what, I'm going to also invite people from the States, tomorrow's elsewhere, if they'd like to join. And I was not prepared for sort of the incredible level of interest, sort of the explosion of attendance in my Zoom classes. 
in coffee, when I had them in a coffee shop, in coffee shops, the most I ever had was about 30 people, but usually it was five people, seven people, something like that. At the highest point, you know, there was, we broke the Zoom because uh, the Zoom account that I had could only have 100 people in it, but we had people trying to get into it. And over the three hours, because I teach in the Zoom, three different levels of Chamorro. Mm -hmm. So students come in, they leave after an hour, others replace them. In August of 2020, there was more than 300 students that came through the Zoom room. And so there was so many people who had, especially from the states who had very little knowledge of Chamorro, but were really passionate about knowing more about where they come from, where their parents or their grandparents come from. And so in 2020, uh, in 2021, uh, what happened was that some of my Zoom students came through to Guam, and one of them, June Pangalinen, who lives in California, she kind of asked me in passing, she was like, uh, when I met with her here at the Guam Museum and I took her and some of my other Zoom students visiting on a tour of the exhibit, she said, Senor, would you ever be interested in doing like an adult immersion camp on Guam? And I was like, that's an amazing idea. There's already an immersion camp for the youth, for young people, but there's not really anything yet immersion style, immersion focused for adults, right? Not unless sort of you just kind of lock yourself in your in a room with your nana who only speaks Chamorro or something like that, right? Um, wherever you go, there's going to be lots of English around you. It's inevitable, you know, 80% of Chamorros don't speak Chamorro anymore. So it's hard to get immersion. And so I said, I told you and I was like, you know what? I'm really busy. I have lots of stuff. But if you agree to help me, then I will do it with you. And June had talked, had met with Anne Marie Arceo from the Harau School while she was on island. And she asked, you know, can you and Anne Marie, can can we all do this together? And I was like, absolutely. Anne Marie's the a, a, the greatest person to get involved in this because she's got experience on the ground with the grassroots on language revitalization. And so we did it last year in June 2022. Um, we hosted 18 people, and 17 of them came from off-island. One of them lives on Guam, and several of them had never been to Guam before. And one thing that was super amazing about the experience was that there was parents and children who came back together. There was couples who came, and there was a few people who were not Chamorro but came to support their partner. But the best was that we had, for example, Tunantonion White, who is over 80 years old now, he came with his son, Alex, and for Tun Antonio, it was an amazing experience. He was choked up with emotion all the time because as part of the immersion camp, we would sit in classrooms every day for at least an hour or two learning sort of in a classroom setting. But then we also took people to the Harau School where they got to see the kids who are learning and already speaking tomorrow. They got to go to the Micronesian Area Research Center and look at the genealogical records there. So people got to try to put together their family tree. We took them to Kish 102.9 and they got to be on the Chamorro radio station. They went to Sagan Kutur on Chamorro. They learned about Chamorro medicine from Mama Chai, the Zoamti there. They also learned to weave from Tomas Torres. And so Tun Antonio White, who was born, you know, right before World War II started, he was so choked up with emotion, he said, you know, our people are amazing. Why did no one teach me that our people are so amazing and so wonderful and so beautiful? And so it was uh, emotional, touching, inspiring on so many levels um, because for two weeks, five days out of the week, eight in the morning to 5 p.m., people were in the program. And then on Saturdays, we had half day optional outdoor activities where we did sort of an island tour of the south, visiting cultural sites one day. And then we took, uh, on another Saturday, we took them to Hilaan, Lost Pond, Shark's Pit. And so for, for people who were trying to kind of get an immersive experience linguistically or culturally, this was, this was something. We wanted to try to combine them together so that you're hearing the language the whole time that you're here, but you're also getting connected with the culture. So for example, Frank Grabon, 
a you know master of Chamorro dance, gave a presentation on his history and creating Chamorro dances, taught the people a chant and a dance as well. Even Polly Eric Forbes <laughs> came and talked about sort of a Chamorro history, giving a lecture in the Chamorro language. And so it was, it was people were exhausted, <laughs> but they were also very excited <laughs> and happy because you know, if you come back home and you want to do all these things, it's going to be hard to connect and sure. organize everything. Sure. But what me and the organizers did is we just said, we want to try to give you as much of an intense, immerse and meaningful experience as possible. So we're going to pack two weeks filled with language, culture and history. We're going to be doing this again in June of 2023 this year. Did we change the, the time frame? Oh, yes. So that was the pilot program right. in which we were testing everything out um, and it was a big success, but we've learned some lessons too. Okay. For this year, we are planning July 10th July. to July 21st, 2023. So another two week period, but this time we're gonna try it in, in July. Uh, June was difficult because some classes are still ending in the States. Mm. Um, people had scheduling issues but this time we're going to try it in july because it seems like a time when lots of families come back yep. and many of our participants who are off island they combined it with sort of a return home mm -hmm. so they wanted to do this and they talked to their family and they said you know what we've it's the pandemic is sort of moving towards the end we let's go home mm -hmm. let's go home and so it was great you got to spend two weeks in this program and then your family could join you and you could visit with you know relatives sort of uh, the rest of the time wow but yes we we are uh i mean um for, as somebody you know for me who teaches tomorrow but i did not grow up speaking tomorrow sort of these experiences are very nourishing for me as well because um it is the norm now for tomorrow's to not speak their native language so it's not like before, you know, like two generations ago, if you didn't speak tomorrow, everyone looks at you, they tease you. You don't know your language, who are you? But now it's much more common for tomorrows to not know their language, right? right? So for me, what I like to do is to normalize the learning of who we are. So that when somebody says, I want to know more about who we are, you don't tease that person mm -hmm. and say, hi, you don't know who you are. What's the matter with you? Instead, you say, me too. I have questions too. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear these stories growing up too. I didn't learn this language growing up too. Let's learn together. So it's more about sort of bringing, because, you know, we talk about what inafa maulik means, but when you many people have this experience if you go to your aunts and uncles your grandparents or your parents and you say can you teach me tomorrow they give you the the kasi spirit they give you the the botlon the sarcastic spirit they tease you or maybe they put you down and they tell you ah, why this language you know or oh you sound so bad you're hurting my ears stop so for me, this is all part of what I like to just promote is right. let's normalize the learning of who we are. Absolutely. So no more sort of shaming people if you don't speak tomorrow. No more shaming people because the only thing that you know about being tomorrow is you have a tomorrow last name. But help people sort of on their journey in learning. Wow. So speaking of the journey with this uh, adult immersion program, uh, July 10th to the 21st. Is there going to be a fee for this? I mean, it's got to, you know, you've got instructors and whatnot. I'm sure there's a lot of costs that go into this. Yes. And Sidus Masi, we try to kind of keep, we've tried to keep the expenses as low as possible okay. while also sort of compensating those. Yeah. So one of the things that me and June really talked about is that the people who are doing so much for the language and culture, a lot of times people expect them to do it for free and they're passionate and they're willing to do it for free. But we wanna make sure that everyone who's doing great work receives sensuli from this. And so um, last year we made sure that 60% of all of the money we received from tuition went to sensuli to the museum, Parau, Sagan Kuturan Chamorro, that everyone who spoke to the group was given a stipend for their time. And so for this year, 
and we may be able to bring it down a little bit lower, but at least now, given that we don't know how many people exactly are going to sign up, um, the fee for the two-week program is $1,000. Okay. $1,000. And if we get more than 20 people to sign up, then we can bring it down a little bit. But at least given where we are in, out, at now in terms of those who have committed, we want to make sure we can pay everybody. We want to make sure we can cover our costs. So $1,000. Understood. Uh, and oh, and, oh, being and in um, a... while you are in the, oh, before I forget, while you're in the program, mm -hmm. food, your, your lunch and your breakfast is covered. Uh, um, because we feel it important that, you know, because you know how tomorrows are. You, if you send people off to get lunch together, they're not going to come back for two or three hours. Right. right. And so we want to keep you in the same place. And transportation is provided, too. I was going to so, say, just learning, yeah, being cool. in an immersion program is invaluable. But yes, there are so many logistical uh, costs that are involved. And you just shared it, food and uh, transportation, right? And then, of course, like you mentioned, the instructors, too. Uh, because it is a service, right? And we need to normalize, you know, uh, be learning tomorrow and the culture also it's a service that is going to you know uh, be very invaluable to our lives and w we should normalize paying for these services Hungen, most definitely I mean we gotta we gotta sort of learn that lesson right is that if you could uh, you know if your if your cousin puts out an album you could probably get it for free but you want to support your cousin, so maybe he'll make a second album. Yes, absolutely. Agreed 100%. Um, we don't have very much time, so I really appreciate you coming on, Dr. Bavakwa. Once again, July 10th to the 21st, uh, $1,000 to join this immersion program. I saw a lot of the footage. It definitely looks well worth it. I need to actually try to see if I can put in for leave for this so I can apply because this is definitely something that I need for myself and for my wife, uh, my adult child. Uh, where can we apply, Dr. Bavakwa? If, if you are interested, you can email me at michael.bavakwa at dca.guam.gov. Email me and I'll send you the links that you can register um, that have information. I'll send you a PowerPoint presentation that has all the details about our plans this year. But reach out to me or reach out to the Guam Museum on social media, message us, and then we can get you that information. But we are taking registrations now. And so um, if you are interested, remember, I think, you know, this is the, the goal for this, though, as June likes to put it, is that if you go through this program, your your tomorrow learning levels up. Right. So no matter where you are at yeah. now, whether you can speak a little bit, you don't know much, by going through these two weeks, you will level up in a lot of different ways. And so that's that's the experience that we want to provide for people. Once again, thank you so much, Dunk Luna, Sadulis Masi, Dr. Bavakwa. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the work that you've done. You're just a pioneer in my mind. Uh, for helping people like myself learn some more. So appreciate this so much. Adios. Once again, this has been another edition of Buenas Talk. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. What is in half a day, Marianas? For the past year, we've been bringing you your morning headlines from the Pacific Daily News and the Marianas Variety into your homes at 7 a.m. We're excited to announce that One is in the morning is now... dun da 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 One is later in the morning! We're gearing up to give you more features, more insight, and more focus. Well, let's be honest. The coffee doesn't actually kick in for me until 9 a.m. anyway, so let's just own it. We're right here with you, getting you prepared, productive, and informed beginning at 9 a.m every weekday morning on PBS Guam and the CNMI. Welcome back to Buenos. We apologize for the technical difficulties earlier. We were unable to get audio up for the Pacific Daily News headlines, but we will have them available for you uploaded on our Buenos YouTube channel later today. And now your COVID recovery report. Free COVID-19 community vaccination clinics continue into March with the Aganya Shopping Center second floor clinic from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Also at the Zonia Mayor's Office tomorrow, Friday, March 3rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m.
and next Friday, March 10th, at the Meng Meng Tao to Mai Community Center, also from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. These clinics are available for adults and children six months and older. Walk-in patients will be accepted, and the last vaccine will be administered 30 minutes before closing. Please bring a photo ID. To view the most up-to-date COVID-19 information, including weekday surveillance summary reports, visit dphss.guam.gov slash COVID-19 or guamrecovery.com. For inquiries, contact 311 through a local number. And the Guam War Claims through the Guam World War II Reconciliation Act of 2021's filing period is ending tomorrow, March 3rd at 5 p.m. If you are a World War II survivor or know someone who is and or was and has not been previously recompensed, apply as soon as possible as the filing deadline nears. Visit the Guam War Claims Processing Center at the Guam Museum in Haganya or your mayor's office to fill out a hard copy application. You can also download a digital application at doa.guam.gov and complete it for submission to the Guam War Claims Processing Center. And the National Weather Service Guam Weather Forecast Office has announced the following advisories. A high surf advisory is in effect for Guam, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. along north and east facing reefs. Large breaking waves of 9 to 12 feet are expected in the surf zones. And a high risk of rip currents is in effect for Guam, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan until 7 a.m. tomorrow as well. Dangerous rip currents are expected along the coastal waters of the Marianas. An experienced swimmer should remain out of the water due to dangerous conditions. And a small craft advisory is in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow for Marianas coastal waters due to conditions being hazardous for small crafts. East winds of 15 to 25 knots with gusts up to 30 knots and seas 10 to 13 feet are expected. Inexperienced mariners, especially those operating smaller vessels, should avoid navigating in hazardous conditions. Visit weather.gov slash GU to stay up to date on all weather alerts concerning the Marianas. On behalf of Polly, myself, and the entire PBS family, thanks for tuning in. And Biba, mess tomorrow. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety.